It is the first day of school, August 6th, and my kids are already at specials for the next 20 minutes. They're in PE. So a lot this morning, a lot. So last night around like 7.30, I started getting some really bad cramps in my abdomen area, if you can figure that out. Um, and so I took a bath with some like peppermint and rosemary um, soaking salt. And then after that, I tried to go to bed, put a heating pad on myself, nothing worked. I took some pain medication, nothing. I literally slept one hour last night. One hour, if that. I'm not even quite sure how long. Um, but I'm in a lot of pain now, still. Um, I don't think that it's related to um, Shark Week. Uh, I think it's something else, but I feel like crap. I can hardly stand up, I feel hot and sweaty, I feel weak, I feel like I need to throw up. Um, so it's been rough, but I think Mind Over Matter kicked in as soon as I saw my kids because I felt better um, up until I left them at special. So that just tells you Mind Over Matter. Um, I'm just too excited to meet them. And I have 21 kids as of today. One is absent, but I had her sister last year, so the parents already know my drill. Um, but I love them already. They're super sweet. They're so quiet. They are so excited to be here, so that makes me excited. So um, I'm sweating like a pig. Mandy, how's it going in there for you? I'm sweaty. Yeah. Mandy, how are you feeling? Good. Good? Yes. All right. So I haven't even touched my coffee because I'm afraid of what might come from it. <laughs> but we're going to make it through today. So I wanted to show you guys something super important this morning. I've had a lot of questions about these um, math numbers. Those were found on TPT. I think it's called the Great Math Challenge or Multiplication Challenge. Um, they are just on TPT. I just printed them out on my Cricut. Um, I think I might even have just printed them out and cut them myself. So another thing that I've been getting questions about is my book bins and my cubbies. So I do flexible seating. Right now the kids are assigned a seat just so that we can get used to each other and get acclimated. But when the kids are not sitting in assigned seats, they're still sitting in table groups and not desks. These desks have been turned around so that they cannot access the inside of them. So basically I'm gonna show you guys what is in a cubby and what is in a book bin. All right, so this is cubby number one. The kids have not come over here yet. The book bin is missing a couple items, but I will show you those items um, outside of the cubby. So basically back in the back, once you pull the book bin out, you will find the um, manipulatives bags that the kids sorted. Um, in my classroom setup vlogs. So these have pretty much all of the manipulatives that the kids will need throughout the year, minus like a clock and some other little things. But this goes in the very back of their cubby and stays back there. Then in their book bin, they're gonna have a few items. They're going to have a, and in this binder is an agenda. I'm trying not to show the front, um, but the agenda will come out. The agenda will come out. Um, they also have some, uh, dividers, which will be, um, there will be an avid tab, there will be a reading tab, math, writing and language, and songs. Now the reason why I don't have a science social studies tab is because I have an entire notebook dedicated to that, and we don't do it as often, so I don't want to dedicate a whole tab when I want songs and avid to be in there. So they will have that in their binder. They will also store all of their handouts for each subject in this binder. So the agenda won't be in there. This will come out and will be attached to their homework folder with a binder ring so that they can take them home together. So that's why it will be in the binder. They're also going to have their tech cards shoved in the back and they're going to be making collages to put in the front to represent them. They're also going to have their math book loose in here. They're going to have a whiteboard and a pencil pouch that only has a highlighter, a pencil, and a colored utensil. So either a pen or a colored pencil that they choose. And then they will also have their like whiteboard marker and a highlighter and their whiteboard eraser. 
This is not a place for them to store crayons. It's not a place for them to store scissors or markers or anything like that. It's only what I allow them to have. So in addition to these items, they will have, everything's over here because I'm getting ready to pass it out. They will have a red folder. This is their ketchup folder. And I did print labels out that I got on TPT and I'll show them to you in a minute. Um, this will be their classwork folder. So it'll say ketchup here and then it will say may do and must do. Everything that I give them that they need to complete will go in this folder. I just feel that it's a lot easier for them to track one folder rather than two. And then I'm not sure which one yet, blue or green, but one of these will be their take home folders. And then I was thinking about maybe doing, but they don't have the binder tabs in here, the binder little brackets. I was gonna have them put all their songs in a folder and keep it separate from their binder, but they don't have the brackets, so I'm not gonna do that. All right, then they will have a red notebook. This will be their writing notebook. They will have a blue notebook. This will be their reading notebook. And then they will have two composition books. One is for math, one is for science social studies. So social studies would be on one side, then if you flip the book, science will be on the other so that they can fill just one book for both subjects. Like I said, we don't do it that often. I usually embed it into my reading curriculum, so I don't feel like I need a whole uh, notebook um, assigned to them for that. They're also gonna have their little readers. They're gonna have a bookmark. They're gonna have a manila pocket. This is to hold all of their grabbers in their book bin. Then I will obviously give them highlighters, pencils, whiteboard markers, and erasers. That will all be in their book bin. Their library books will also go in their book bin if it fits. If it doesn't fit, it will just go in their cubby where they can get to it. But the idea behind the cubby is because we're an avid school, we focus on organization. We want the kids to only have the items that they need and not extra. So I know a lot of people don't like doing community supplies and that's totally fine. It's completely up to you. But I do community supplies simply for the avid purpose. We want them to stay organized. We want them to learn how to clean up after themselves, to organize themselves. So each table group has a caddy and in this caddy they will have a box of crayons and they will empty their box of crayons into these little containers which I got from Walmart last year. They will have a pair of scissors for each teammate and then they will also have a pack of markers, a pack of colored pencils in the box. So they will have everything that they'll need if they're going to do a project that requires supplies like that. I'll just send the team leader over to grab the bin and then they have it ready to go. And then the person who's like the table leader for the day, they'll be in charge of keeping the caddy clean. I will check the caddies every day and give their team a grabber or a dojo point if their caddy is clean before they leave. So that is everything that goes in a book bin slash cubby in my classroom. So I have about nine minutes. I'm going to sit on my tush and I'm going to relax because the kids are coming back inside and we're gonna continue with our procedures PowerPoint. Now I always do a first day PowerPoint and it has all of my procedures there, but it also has my community builders as a slide and all my activities as a slide. So I literally all have to, so all I have to do on the first day of school is go through this slideshow. All the activities are listed in there as a slide. If for some reason I run out of activities to do, I do have some backups, like the cuties that we got from Target, the little two truths and a fib, the little classroom scavenger hunt, or classroom I spy. I have those as well. And then um, the bubbles for the self-control activity. We are just dripping with extra things that we can do. If we run out of time, we have a lot to do in day one, we've got read alouds coming, we've got community builders coming, so it is packed full. So anyway, I'm gonna go, and I'll see you guys a little bit later. Hi everyone, welcome back to Apples and Tiaras. I know that it's been a little bit since I posted a video. In fact, the last one I posted was over two weeks ago, and that was my tour of my friend's classrooms. Maybe before this vlog, you're seeing my little short uh, first day of school vlog. But if you follow me on Instagram, then you guys know I've been a little bit under the weather the last um, about two weeks. 
Um, so I'm just sitting here in my classroom, guys, and I'm planning um, because I'm a little bit behind due to the fact that I was gone for two days on the first week of school. I can't even believe that that's even something that happened because that's not something that I would normally do. So if you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I was down from about Monday night, the first week of school, to probably about Sunday night um, this last week. So August 5th up until August 12th, I was doubled over in abdominal and back pain. I went to the ER twice. They did blood work, they did CT scans, they did ultrasounds. They did all kinds of stuff, and ER doctors are not like the bee's knees. Like, they're not going to find out what's wrong with you, but they're going to just treat you and let you go home. So I did get some pain medication and some other things to help. I still don't know what's going on with me, so I have a doctor's appointment next week for a GI doctor, which is gastrointestinal doctor, um, to see what's going on. I still feel probably like 10%, not myself. I'm about 90% better. I still wake up with like stomach cramps and like little things, but I'm able to eat now. I'm sticking to a very bland diet. They think that it might be an ulcer, which is bizarre to me because I've drank coffee and eaten spicy foods and other things like my whole life. But I do account it to maybe taking a pain medication without enough food in my stomach for um, cramping, so that could have been it. I don't really know yet. We'll find out when I go to the doctor next week, but I'm feeling like 90% better, so I'm a little bit more myself now. However, now I feel a little bit behind. So this morning I am just pounding out some lesson plans for next week. I wanna make sure that I am planned and prepped for next week before I leave this building today. It is Friday afternoon, August, 16th. Today is my best friend's birthday and also my teammate's birthday. So we got her a little card with an Amazon gift card in here. We're going to deliver that. But I'm going to stay at school today until I have everything planned, copied, and ready to go for next week. That way on Monday morning, I can walk in and start planning for the week after that. Um, because I did miss two days of the first week of school, I'm still working on routines, procedures, um, we're talking about growth mindset. We're talking about um, zones of regulation. We're talking about um, self-regulation um, and just some simple third grade standards that we've started with. Uh, we're doing place value right now. So next week I will begin talking about rounding and we're also talking about describing characters. Uh, to this week we focused on character traits, both personality and physical traits. Next week we will talk about feelings, motivations, things like that. So what I've been using to teach reading the la these, the, this first week and next week is Rooted in Reading. These are on TPT. They were created by Hope King and Amy Lemons. And they're great for the beginning of the school year when you're trying to establish routines, um, trying to have a little bit less prep and less thought. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say less thought because I'm really still thinking about what I'm teaching, but everything is pretty much done for you here. You have your comprehension piece, you have vocab, you have grammar, you have uh, writing and informational text. So next week I will be teaching the book Crow Boy. And I have the book here, but I also have linked the book on my students' Google Classroom page, so the YouTube video of the Read Aloud. That way they have access to the book as well. So I'm just typing up my lesson plans here. Uh, nothing in my classroom has really changed other than the fact that there have been kids here. And so, you know, normal classroom things going on. Um, I would love to be able to do a room tour for you guys next week. So that video will be up after this one. Um, that'll be up after this video. So another thing that has come about because of my ulcer, I think is what it is, um, I haven't had coffee in like two weeks. So because of that, I've decided that I'm going to try to not drink coffee anymore, caffeinated coffee anyway, um, just because it's an expensive habit. 
and why not try to not drink it if I don't need it? So I got some B12, and this is the natural brand. You guys know I love the 5-HTP from this brand, and I will be taking that as well once I know my stomach is better. I don't want to take anything right now, but um, I'm going to be taking these B12 energy uh, supplements, and they're 5,000, I don't even know, I'm not really sure what MCG stands for, it's that sad. Um, but I'm going to see if these give me the energy that coffee does, and then I'll report back and let you guys know. Um, they're fast dissolving, so that's great. All right, so I am going to sit here and do my plans for next week so that I can get that done, and then I'll try to pick you guys up in a little bit. I want to play a joke on my students. Mandy and I were laughing this morning. Do you guys remember the videos where you say, what does Y-E-S spell? And they say yes. Then you say, what does E-Y-E-S spell? I want to see if I can get them with that joke. And then there's another one that says, there are 30 cows in a field, 28 chickens. How many didn't? I'm going to hit them with those two today. I think it'd be really funny. Okay, I'm going to get started planning and I'll see you guys in a second. What does Y-E-S spell? Yes. yes. What does E-Y-E-S spell? E I -S -E -S. I -S -E -S. Nice job. Okay, I have another one. <clears throat> there are 30 cows in a field. 28 chickens. How many didn't? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me say it again. Yeah. Okay. There are 38 cows in a field. Or sorry, 30 cows in a field. 28 chickens. How many didn't? How many didn't? I don't get the question. I don't get the question. 28? No. 28? 48. How many chickens? How many? There are 30 cows in a field. 38. 28 chickens. How many didn't? Two. How many didn't? Is it mine? How many didn't? You're vlogging already? How many didn't? How many didn't? How many didn't? How many didn't? Didn't what? 30 cows in a field. 28 chickens. How many didn't? Didn't did what? what? <laughs> didn't what? Troopers, assemble! Shut! Hey guys, so it is the end of the day and I'm exhausted. Um, a lot of things today, we were busy, we had a fire drill, we had our dibbles testing, which is our, um, like one of our benchmark tests where we measure how many words per minute they read, how accurate they are, their vocabulary acquisitions, we had that. We had um, PE, we had a fire drill. We had the grabber store, so I had to count all their grabbers and things like that, so it was just a busy day. Um, the kids were awesome today for the most part, very chatty, so we're gonna be working on following directions and following expectations with noise levels. So that's gonna be our goal for next week. I am here until about 5.15 today. My husband and I um, are meeting up with his biological father, 
yes, they've met before <laughs> many times. Um, we're meeting up with him for dinner. Um, he's in town, so we're gonna go meet up with him, but we're meeting somewhere kind of close to where I work. So I told him, I was like, why don't you and Cash just meet me there, I'll stay at work and get some things done, because I do have quite a few projects that I need to work on that I'd like to just be done with. Um, that way I don't have to add it on to anything like planning and things like that. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I have this little stack of like curriculum that is like bigger files that I need to sort into my binders and into those t uh, tubs. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on right now. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that all of my plans and things that I need prepped are ready for next week. That way I can come in on Monday and start pr planning and prepping for the next week. I got a little bit behind because of being absent. So I'm gonna make sure that I try to do that. Also, I don't have a computer cart yet, which is sort of frustrating. So I think I might take this, this cart back because it's kind of just here. This cart needs to go back. Um, because it's kind of just in the way, it isn't really serving any purpose, so I think I'm gonna ditch it. It was supposed to be for my teaching spot, but I'm not using it as that, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it back to the library and just get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna, uh, actually, here's what I'll do. I gotta make better use of my time. I'm gonna make sure I have everything sent to the copier for next week and then that way I can take the library cart on my way to the copy machine. <laughs> I also need to do some seat rearranging just because I'm starting to learn these kiddos and their needs and uh, things that they need in order to be successful seating chart wise. I also have to make a phone call to a parent. So actually I'm gonna make a little to-do list real quick. So I did manage to get quite a few projects done. I got all of that curriculum that was sitting right here in the corner of my desk space put away. I cleaned my desk space, which is also my small group space. All of this is going home with me. Um, I got this little spot cleaned. I also moved around, oh, I moved around some furniture. So I did have a floor table and you, 
haven't seen it because I haven't done a room tour, but if you saw my classroom setup, you did see that. Um, I did have a floor, um, sorry, I'm putting this binder away. I did have a floor table right here. Um, and the students were complaining about sitting on the floor. They weren't really comfortable. They wanted a chair with a desktop. So I traded my teammate my round table, which belongs to me, and I'll get it back if I ever leave or anything like that, but I traded her the round table for this, these two um, trapezoid tables. So it's still round, it still seats four, but they can now sit at a chair at the tabletop. So now I have um, four desks, four desks, one round, one round, one round, and then a rectangle. So I do still have space for one, two, three students if I get any new ones. And then I also have this whole table and those two black tables up front. Um, so yeah, I have plenty of space for students. I have 21 kids right now. So if I do get another new one, I will put them over here. Another thing I wanted to mention was my kick fix bands. Um, I know I mentioned these in my classroom vlog or my classroom haul video. So it's really hard to put them on the chairs because we have these chairs with these legs. So what I did is I put two on this desk, one on each side, and then my kiddo, he just um, bounces on each, like with one leg each. So it's kind of even cooler because he has one for each foot. Um, and so I'm looking around campus for a chair that's not like this, but I don't think we have any. Um, so for now, it's just like that. Um, I love the fact that I had extra time to like clean up because I'm leaving my space really clean. This space really clean, which I'm loving. And yeah, so the only thing I have left out is my math um, centers, which um, these ones are already made from last year and I just bagged them up and I'm gonna use them again next week and then i think i'm going to keep these up here underneath my community builders one so i have this pink one here this is all community building activities so this one is all community building activities like pre-made stuff so um from like question cards to like team tetris to get to know you stuff so i'll keep my math centers here too because i'll be using them throughout the year and i just want to keep them like somewhere close by to where i plan so that i just have them have like quick access to them so another thing i need to do is cut all of these out these are all of teaching and so forth's third grade math posters mandy and i laminated and made them super small and we're going to be putting them on the little ikea frames i've seen some people do this on Instagram, so I'm gonna do that. But I think, let's see, I probably have like 15 more minutes. So I'm gonna take all my stuff out to my car because I have quite the load today. I'm taking my Cricut home and all the stuff that comes with my Cricut. So I'm actually <laughs> commandeering this cart and I'm gonna take all my stuff outside first and then I'll bring it back in here and I'll take it to the library next week. But. Other than that, that's going to be it for this vlog. I'm hoping that next week I will be able to pick up my camera and intentionally vlog maybe every day, maybe not every day, just whenever I can to get a nice classroom vlog out for all of you. I'm going to purposely leave this purse in here so that I don't forget to come back with the cart, which why would I do that? I don't know why. But... <sighs> There's so many things that I wanted to tell you guys about in the first week and now everything is like put away and <sighs> just like back to school ideas. So I really apologize you guys. Maybe next year I'll be better. If not, there are so many wonderful people that you can go and watch. Um, my friend Jessica at Hello Third Grade, my friend Vanessa at My Second Grade Life, Shelly is rocking it over in sixth grade, Darren is um, hanging out and getting ready for school on Etik by Darren, Jennifer from Genuine Teaching, she's probably got all kinds of things out for back to school. 
So again, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have anything better for you guys as far as back to school just because things were so broken up and rushed because of my sickness and I'm really glad I'm on the mend now. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.